From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impe Presents. And of course, this is our Christmas program and we are so delighted that we can share this blessed time of the year with you. Now, the world is out there and they're buying gifts and they're talking uh, everything uh, going on with Santa Claus and everything else. In fact, I'd like for you to take a look here. And it's entitled Christmas and the World. See Santa up there? And everybody's sort of out uh, enjoying themselves and having a good time. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with enjoying ourselves at Christmas. We need to do that and getting gifts and giving them to those that we love and around the world. And then this next one really touched my heart. It's from the magazine Israel, My Glory. When God became man. I just want to say one thing about this. We're giving gifts, we're giving gifts, and uh, not, as I said, nothing wrong with that. We want to do that as much as we can. But don't forget, the greatest gift of all was laid in a manger. We need to remember the greatest gift came from the Lord. And Jack, we as a country, United States and around the world, need to be focusing on that too. Not only enjoying ourselves, singing, having a good time, but remember the gift. Oh, Rexel, I've been preaching the gospel for 72 years. Never missed a night, never had a day of illness, and then Satan tried to take my life and stop this ministry. But my message was always this go into all the world and preach the gospel to every man. Now, what is the gospel? 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. I declare unto you the gospel that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. And you know, in 1924, the fundamentalists of America said so many of our churches now are beginning to drift from the truth. So we're going to set five things you must believe to be one of us. And if you don't believe those five things, stay out. You're not a member of, you don't care what denomination you are. This is what you must believe. One, the deity of Christ, that he's God from Amen. all eternity. Amen. Two, the virgin birth. Three, the blood atonement on the cross. Four, his bodily resurrection. Five, his coming again. And boy, I'm telling you, I'm going to go through seven weeks and prove that we are the generation that's going to go home. Will you tell others, will you make telephone calls? Say, Dr. Enipi says, we're the generation. We will not have to die. We're going to go home in the twinkle of an eye, 1100 of a second. When he says, come up here, the great rapture is coming. We're going home, hallelujah. And they're going to be all of our loved ones. What a day of rejoicing that will be. Amen. You know, I'm so happy that we're going to have that first program on our New Year's Eve program starting the new year. And that will be so wonderful. Well, I just want to say that um, the night that Christ was born was a very holy night. And you know, our... Announcer Chuck Ullman is not only a great voice for announcing, and he's been with us for many, many years, but he's also a great trumpet player. He's coming right now to do a song for you entitled, O Holy Night. Chuck?
that was phenomenal. I know that you all enjoyed it so very, very much. And I think he's one of the finest trumpet players anywhere and always has been. Well, you know, friends, I just want to say that Jesus is the reason for this whole season. We need to be focusing on him. And I'd like for you to take a look, please, at the very first night, Bethlehem. Christ and us. Do you see there, Mary and Joseph, they're going toward Bethlehem. And that, of course, is where Jesus was born, in a manger there in Bethlehem. Take a look at this one. <clears throat> oh, well, not only that, but uh, the shepherds saw uh, what was happening because an angel appeared and spoke to them. And they saw, what? What are you talking about? How can this be? Well, they join Mary and Joseph. Joseph on the left there, worshiping the Lord. You see the, the shepherds out there? Oh my, oh my, and precious Virgin Mary. And once again, the adoration of the shepherds. The little boy on the right there with his dog. How wonderful to know that they recognized that this was their Messiah. This was the savior of the world, the one who came from the Lord. Well, you know, the nativity scene always moves our hearts, doesn't it? It always has moved my heart. And I used to, even as a little girl, love to see the shepherds coming and worshiping. And certainly it is an important time for us to remember what Christmas is all about. And as I said in the beginning, the greatest gift of all was the gift of God given to the world, his son. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for this great, wonderful gift, our Savior. Jack, I'd like for you, if you will, right here, to explain in full all about the gift of the Lord, our salvation, even his coming again. You know, the Lord uh, is risen and he's coming back again but especially focusing on the gift of God to this world. Oh, my dear friend, I've come a long way. My parents came from Belgium. He worked in a nightclub, became an atheist. I was never allowed to go to church. He said, there's no God. I found that God, his name is Jesus. Amen. Oh, I have fallen in love with this Lord. I have won seven million to Christ in my lifetime. I actually have memorized this in my entire Bible. I've got over 20,000 verses. 40 some thousand members to memorize it all. I've gone through it 40 times and I do know this book. Now, let me give you the story. Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. That's the Father. And the earth was void, without form or shape. And the Spirit of God came upon the face of the waters. So there are two there already. Where's the third one? You see, there are three of them. There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And the Word is Christ. And these three are one Godhead. Not three gods, one Godhead. We find a third one involved in creation in John 1, verse 1, in the beginning. Just like the other beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. All things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. He was in the world. The world was made by Him. And the world. He came unto his own, the Jews, and they freed him. But as many of the Jews as received him became sons and daughters of God, and they became the first apostles. Hmm. Now I'm going to shock you. You say, which Bible do you have? King James Version for the Protestants or Doye Version for the Catholics? Jewish Version. Why? Some of you anti-Semitics who hate Jews, you're going to have to regret that and someday apologize to God when he passes out the rewards. You're going to lose rewards. Why? There are 66 books here. 64 
were written by Jews. Mm -hmm. What? All the Old Testament. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. The only two books not written by Jews, Luke, after whom the book was named, and the book of Acts. Those two alone, written by a Greek, everything else, Jews, every word of this book. And, and you hate the Jews? God loves the Jews. I'm going to have a whole sermon on it very, very soon. He says, she's the apple of my eye. She's my betrothed, my fiancé. She's my wife, and I'm going to give Israel an everlasting name forever, forever. That's how much he loves the Jews. But they turned down Jesus. Now, where do we go from there? Is God through with him because of that? No. Romans 9, 10, 11. 9 is their past, turning them down. 10 is the future, very soon. And they have their eyes open, who Jesus really is. And chapter 11, verse 26, all Israel shall be safe, every Jew. Hmm. Christ comes a second time. We're raptured. We go to meet him in the clouds. And as I said last week, they now know because of what's just happened with this great miracle of our spaceship going up 300 million miles. Are you listening very carefully? The Bible says that that area of the world where God is is 50 million years old. Wow. But they did nothing until 4,000 years ago. Mm. And the Lord came and he created heaven and earth. And Jesus did his part. Who established all the ends of the earth? What's God's name? What's his son's name? Now, we all know it as Jesus, but that's not his original name. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. Word... Because all three are spirits. There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. All spirits, no bodies. So how are they going to function? God says one of us has to take a body. Jesus said, I'll go. I'll become the Word. I'll be the communicator. And it was granted. But now, how is he going to get here? A virgin birth. God could use no one else because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, Romans 6, 23. There's not one just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Not one, not one. And if we say we have not sinned, we make God a liar. What? Some of you people, you say, I'm going to be saved by works. I'm doing the best I can. There is no one of us any good in right. God's eyes. Mm. It's all sinners. And he said, if you don't agree, you're calling me God a liar because I said all, and all means all. Well, what are we going to do then? There's only one who was holy, harmless, separate from sinners. Clean! Jesus. And he said, Father, to this point, anyone who's broken those Ten Commandments which you gave, Thou shalt have no gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image of anything that's in heaven above earth beneath earth. That part of the world beneath the earth. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord God in vain. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. Now, why do you say that? Because of the sins that follow, which they were breaking. And they were dishonoring their parents. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not lie. And thou shalt not covet. What is coveting? The love of money is the root of all evil. It's why some covet after the edge of the faith. Now they broke them all. God says, what am I going to do with these people? There's only one way to be saved. And it's the shedding of blood. So the best they could do, because they knew that every man was a sinner, they said, we'll use animal sacrifices. Bulls, sheep, goats. But after a while, they said, 
doesn't work. Why? It is not possible that the blood of bulls and animals can take away sin. Impossible. All they can do is cover sin. God says, no one can come and be with me because their sins have not been taken away. Just covered. That's the Hebrew word kavar. So they went into a place called Sheol and Hades. And there they waited until a better time would come. Well, that time came now. Here is Jesus. They said, there's only one who is perfect. And he's the son of God. And they looked for this virgin, pure woman. And her name was the Virgin Mary. Isaiah 7, 14. And they said, the angels, Mary, you're going to have a son. And he's going to be the one who dies for sinners. And his death, his shedding of blood is going to take away sin. It's only been covered till now. No one can get to heaven until they're taken away. But... She said, how is this going to happen? I don't know a man. I'm a virgin. You're the one. A man's blood would taint the whole thing and ruin it all. You're going to bury Jesus, the holy, perfect one. God coming down from heaven. And lo and behold, the Holy Spirit had a great job. Not a sexual act, a creative one. And he put that embryo in the body of that woman. Mm, yes. Nine months later, she bore it. Jesus came out and he, for 30 years, preached. And then the big hour came when he was going to shed his blood. Oh, oh, Rex, this is yes, something. Yes. yes. Jesus. He said, I gave my back to the smiters. And to my cheeks, to those who spit on my face and pulled out my beard till the blood was flowing. And they used on me the Roman cat of nine tails. And as that thing wrapped around my body and the hooks took hold of the flesh, it tore it open. And where they ripped off the beard, my face was bloody. And then they smashed their fist into my face. But the back to the spiders. Hmm. Terrible. But wait a minute. Then they said, let's crucify him. And they laid his body on a cross. They picked it up and took it to the top of the hill, dropped it. And when that cross hit the bottom of the hole, every bone in his body was moved out of place. And the blood started to flow. Blood from head to toe. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses from all, all, all sin. I don't care what you've done, how often you've done it. You could never get to heaven if it weren't for Jesus. Now, a lot of you do good or say, oh, I'm doing the best I can. That's not good enough. Right. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done according to his mercy. He saved us 400 times. This book says... Jesus is the only way. 408 times it said it's his blood alone. 400 and 408 is 808 times. If he said it once, you better believe it. If he says it 808 times, you don't believe it, you'll never see the inside of heaven. I don't care about you 1,700 cults. I don't care about you 2,500 religious. None of you believe what it says about Jesus. You're lost. Muslims and all the rest of you. I pulled no punches. No man can get to heaven without Jesus. Right. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no man, no man can come to the Father but by me. And you know who else is there? The Trinity works together. Jesus said, no man can come except the Father which has sent me. Drag him to Amen. him. Amen, yes. The Holy Spirit, he says, I will baptize you into the body of Christ. Oh. That's not tongues. That's salvation. And then later he says, I'm going to fill you with the Spirit with joy. And then he says, I'm going to seal you to the end. Eternal security. Mm. Wow. The whole tray is involved. The only one who will ever have a body. Listen to me. i got to get into this. The Bible says Christ is coming back. 
Jesus says, if I go away, I'll come again. And he is coming soon. And the next seven weeks after Christmas, I'm proving to the world, we're the crowd that's going up in the twinkling of an eye. 187 trillion billions of miles into space in the twinkling of an eye. It's called the rapture. Uh You ain't got Yeah, I'm going to tell you that. Oh, boy, I want to listen. Don't miss it. I'm preaching now to every human being on earth. For the first time, every human being will have the possibility of hearing that Jesus is the first time. No one's ever preached to 7 billion, 600 per, million per week. Amen. I am. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Oh, am I excited. Imagine Amen. Jesus is about to return. I'm going to be proving it. And when he comes back, he sets up the kingdom of God on earth, the Father's kingdom, not in Rome, in Jerusalem, because God still loves the Jews. And Jesus will be the King of the kings and Lord of lords, and the Holy Spirit's going to be here. And he's going to be producing the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, good, faith, meekness, temperance. That's going to be the greatest time in history. Amen. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Get everyone you know. Call them. The greatest news is about to happen. Oh, Jack, what a story that we have because the Lord came in that manger that day. You know, we need to be telling everybody he's Savior of the world. You can be saved and ready for heaven. In fact, I'm going to sing a song for you right now. And it has to do with, has anyone told you that God loves you? God loves you. Has anyone told you he really cares? Christ came from heaven one day. The price for sin was on him lay. He paid the ransom that day. wonderful that we have a message for this messed up age that we're living in. And I love that song. Has anyone told you, have you 
This is why we come into your home. Have you accepted the Savior of the world to be your Savior? Have you opened your heart? You can have eternal life, be forgiven of anything you don't want there, of all your sins. That's why he came, to be Savior of the world. Will you pray this prayer with Jack now? Let me shock you. Here is what the Trinity has to say. First of all, Jesus is the one who shed his blood. He's the only way. And he says, all that the Father giveth me, I will no wise cast out. And the Holy Spirit baptizes you into my body. All three of us are wanting you saved. Pray it. Jesus, Holy Spirit, Father, all three of you, thank you. Come into my heart, Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, please write to me. I'll send you this little book of first steps in a new direction. Wow, good it is to have the Savior in your heart. Don't forget our wonderful offer of the week, Jack Van Impey Prophecy Bible. Oh, you really need to have this. The whole story is in here, too, with much more. Oh, yes, do not put off making the call or writing to us. We want you to have this wonderful offer. Everything we talk about is in here. That's wonderful to have in your home. I want to leave you with this wonderful, wonderful thought. Wise men still seek him. We'll look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, always remember, God cares for you. And so do we so very, very much. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. We love you. Amen. The preceding program was paid for by the partners of Jack Van Impey Ministries.